back in the early 1900s, this building was actually uh, owned by the mob. There was a lot of uh, mob activity in this area um, all the way up into the 50s and 60s. So this was originally a dinner club called the Primrose and uh, owned by a guy named Buck Brady. And he operated this building for several years, did really, really well, and then ended up having a bit of a feud with another uh, organized crime group out of Cleveland. And they called themselves the Cleveland Syndicate or the Syndicate Four. They heard about this area. Their head guy, Red Masterson, moved them down here and they tried to take over the club. They had a bit of, like I said, a bit of a feud with Buck Brady and uh, eventually uh, did take over the club. I think uh, stories are that uh, Buck Brady may have committed suicide and uh, that's of course the story. So um, Brett Masterson then took over the club and he renamed it the Latin Quarter and it operated as the Latin Quarter for many, many years until well, finally just the, um, the industry, the distillery industry, the brewery industry, uh, you know, the, during Prohibition, alcohol was illegal. Um, so a lot of those jobs kind of moved out west. And so, you know, the, the business kind of died down a little bit. But what's so fascinating about this area is, you know, before that time, this was a huge, um, like they called it the little, little big, sorry. They called it uh, Little Vegas. Right? Okay, yeah. So there were so many cas casinos and dinner clubs in the area that, you know, people like Marilyn Monroe would actually come here and, and party. This is where they would come and play. Oh, cool. And then when people, you know, started losing their jobs, they picked up and they moved out west and they settled in what is now Las Vegas. So Vegas was essentially founded Ooh. based on Newport, Wilder, Kentucky area. So... But with that, you can imagine some of the stories and some of the, the happenings, uh, you know, with organized crime, with the mob, they were not very uh, civil people. They handled their business sometimes very violently. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot of those stories here. So, so yeah, I think there's, you know, just some of the urban legend and then some of the, the true stories, I think, is what plays a part and what really, uh, why there's a lot of activity here. So with that being said, any paranormal activity that occurs here at the bar, um, we get a lot of shadows uh, in this area. Um, especially, I know it's very odd, but at this end here, we get um, a lot of shadow activity, a lot of footsteps. Sometimes it'll look like you'll see someone kind of peeking around the walls or up over the actual bar. Um, you'll see shadows walking past. Um, this area right here where the restrooms are, this area from what we were told during the mob days, this was um, like offices. This is where the bosses did all of their transactions and things like that. So we quite often will hear like male voices, like having conversations in hmm. this area. And again, you'll hear footsteps walking back and forth here. And actually, um, one of the uh, paranormal shows that filmed here early, early on, um, you may be familiar, Ghost Adventures, <laughs> but when they were here uh, filming, Nick was back in the men's restroom here and he started to hear these knocking noises and these mm -hmm. growls and things like that. It's pretty interesting because again, we do get a lot of that activity mm -hmm. uh, back here, uh, especially with the men's restroom. All right, yeah, so this is the, the infamous men's restroom at Bobby Mackey. So again, we do hear a lot of those knocking noises and, and I've not heard the growl so much myself. Okay. Uh, but the shadow activity, um, just really weird noises back here, uh, voices. And actually right behind us here in the corner, obviously you're not gonna see it now, but on the floor, there used to be a uh, trap door here. And we're gonna talk a lot about that trap door when we go downstairs. So okay. There's some really cool stories with All that right. trap door. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot of, lot of activity happens through here. Oh, cool. Carl Lawson, um, if you remember Carl Lawson, Carl used to be the maintenance guy that uh, used to work here. He was actually really good friends with Bobby and he lived here uh, many, many years and uh, had a lot of negative experiences here. And uh, because of that, uh, over the years, eventually um, all of this stuff built up, he had some sort of an attachment. 
and uh, because of that, we had actually uh, an exorcism on Carl here. And this is the area in which that this was performed. This is the area? Yes. Okay. So um, just basically just like we see all over the, the, the bar, you'll again see shadows up here. Um, you'll hear footsteps and things like that, especially as we were stepping up here, the floor, the mm -hmm. step creaked. Yeah. You can hear that sometimes. And sometimes you'll hear that also when we're downstairs and we know there's no one oh, here. Oh, that's cool. So, and it's pretty loud. So, um, but we get also female voices up here. I've had quite a few female voices. But these female, the, the voices that we hear, the female voices, they've never really identified themselves. So hmm. I've never really um, had a name to, uh, you know, to relate to those voices that we hear. But we get in EVPs, we just get random names and voices that are, you know, spit out at us all, all the time. Yeah. So. Um, but as you look out over the bar, when lights are out, you'll start to see just shadows out of the corner of your eye. And, and of course, by the time you look and, you know, they're gone from that area and you look over in the other area, you know, and there's one here. And, and again, it's, it's like they're elusive, like they're watching yeah. very, but very elusive, but you will quite often, will also see them. Uh, there are two doors that are next to the stage here you'll see shadows coming in and, in and out of those doors quite often as well. So um, it gets pretty active around the stage. So let's maybe go down that way and we'll okay. kind of see what we can see down there. We're getting there. Um, You're not Lisa. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I know. This area here, uh, during the casino days, this would have been the, the dinner area, the dining area. Uh, of course, you would have had your rows of, uh, you know, dining tables with you know, fine china, things like that. Uh, is the, you know, organized crime, the mob, they didn't do things very shabby. They were pretty uh, luxurious and bougie, if you want to say. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so when we're sitting here sometimes and we're doing EVP sessions and everyone is really still. You heard that too? Yeah. There was like some sort of bang over this way. Which is really interesting because we've had, I've had my my personal experiences with some of my groups uh, that come in for tours. We've had a lot of uh, activity over here in this left-hand corner area. So huh. um, we've heard, you know, again, bangs and footsteps and things like that. So it's pretty pretty interesting yeah. that you're picking up on that mm -hmm. already. Um, but again, you know, a lot of times when you're just sitting here in this area and everyone is very still, you'll start to feel the floors move. They'll start to shake. It's almost like someone's walking past you and you can feel the floorboards move. Hmm. It, it, yeah. And sometimes you will also feel like there's something brushing past you. Um, so it gets really, really interesting. And then, you know, you'll start to hear the, the noises behind the stage and hear the footsteps. And, you know, again, something very similar to what we just heard. Yeah. But with behind the stage area, and we can go closer if you'd like, um, we do often hear um, just random noises and it's it's almost like someone's back there working like we'll hear things moving around and then you'll hear what sounds like footsteps and knocking noises but we've also heard like what sounds like a humming noise um, a woman singing like a woman's voice humming or singing uh, coming from that area um, and again the shadow activity uh, coming in and out of these uh, doors on each side of the stage and also what's interesting is when we are downstairs in the basement, when we are right below the dance floor, we'll start to hear what sounds like footsteps on the dance floor. And you can hear chairs, what sounds like chairs scooting around or moving around. And we've often had what sounds like something very heavy dropping on the floors as oh. well. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been pretty interesting uh, to, to be able to encountered that but yeah here in this left hand corner we've had quite a bit of activity here lately so maybe you guys, you guys will get lucky and get Yay. some good stuff there <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this area here of the bar back during the casino days this would have been the actual casino uh where there would have been the uh, you know gambling tables and the slot machines and things like that but of course now we've got Mr. Bull here occupying the space. So this is where um, a lot of the uh, action, I guess you could say, takes place on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> Don't trip over the cables here. But um, 
we actually call this corner or this area the creepy corner. Okay. We get a lot of personal experiences uh, back here. At least I have and, and my teammates have. And we've had a lot of groups that have had some things happen back here. But um, Laura, who I think you may have spoken to to schedule uh, your investigation tonight, um, she had, I think it's been a couple of years, actually saw what we would say was a, a full-bodied apparition just as solid as you and I. Um, not see-through, not, you know, not floating, uh, was not transparent. She kind of described him as having some short brown hair and a red t-shirt. You could see full detail of this guy. And he's leaning against the pool table here, just kind of hanging out here one second and gone the next. Is it weird that when we walked over here, I was like, oh, I kind of want to lean on the table. And I was like, you know, I won't lean on the table because I... I was like, I don't want to be like That's rude and like that leave person. On the table. Yeah. I was like, well, maybe I'll take a seat in a yeah. chair instead. But like, I li I really, I just wanted to like lean on right, the table. Right. Right. You know, a lot of Amazing. our tour groups, <laughs> they, they do. They they kind of like, I don't know. It's just something about yeah. that corner that they just kind of yeah. flock to and they just lean against it. You know, of course, as we're doing our tours. So, but not only that, we we've had, um, gosh, of course, the shadows. But I had a, a Catholic priest that was here with me a few years back. We had so much activity when he was here. And it seems like a lot of individuals who are maybe uh, members of clergy or um, law enforcement tend to get um, a lot of activity. Well, your boyfriend's law enforcement, so maybe that'll help us. <laughs> is he... Is he going to come in tonight or is no, it just, you know, no, okay. no. but still you can, you know, we'll, kinda use we'll mention that. it. Yeah. Use that to your advantage and see if you can get anything. But, but yeah, when, when father Mike was here, I mean, he was just getting all kinds of activity and just to kind of give you a little bit of detail. Um, when I turn the lights off back here, I flip the switch at the breaker box, which disconnects the electricity back here completely. Okay. So we had the lights off and as we were standing here doing an EVP session, this light here above the pool table started to flicker. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I'm not sure. Like Settling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. It was so. kind of like a crack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe so. Um, but this light started to flicker like very, very quickly for, you know, two, three seconds or so. It wasn't very long. And then it stopped. And then all of a sudden, Father Mike, he started feeling really ill, really bad. And he had to sit down, kind of gather himself. And for about a minute or so, uh, and then it finally just kind of went away. And he had said that it really didn't feel like something was trying to attach to him, but more of just kind of warn him that he wasn't welcomed. Yeah. And um, so as we went on through the night, you know, other things started to happen. But I hear all the time random noise, or um, like random knocking noises back here. And it's and they're more so really in a pattern or um, repetitive, like it's trying to get your attention, like it's trying to communicate with you. Like Morse code. It, it, very similar, <laughs> yeah. But then sometimes, and no, honestly, and and I'm glad you said that because it is weird. It's it's you'll hear, you know, and then yeah. it'll. It, it's just very odd, but a lot of times we'll hear it on this pool table. Um. We've had other people said that they have actually seen a creature-like thing come out from under the corner here and kind of crawled underneath Absolutely this not. pool table. <laughs> it's just, you know, again, kind of like gargoyle-like. Like, like yeah. it was kind of hunched over and, and crawling, which is really bizarre. But um, I've not really encountered anything like that myself up here something very similar in the in the basement but so yeah this this area does get pretty uh pretty interesting and uh again laura uh who i mentioned earlier actually was able a few months ago was able to get a pool ball to actually fall into one of the pockets 10 minutes later after placing it there that's so cool and these pool tables are very sturdy you can't move them you can't shake them and it was not like right on the edge where it was a far distance. And as her group and you know, she and her group had walked away, they were sitting elsewhere and all of a sudden it finally fell into the pocket. So when we hear things like that, we get really super excited. Yeah. You know, it's it's because it's a big deal for us to, to get those things because it doesn't happen all the time. So um, 
So yeah, footsteps and shadows back here, most definitely. Um, so that's pretty much it down here. If you guys like, we can go on up to the apartment. Sure. There's that Bobby's first wife, Janet. Oh, yeah. Who has since passed away, unfortunately. Um, she was actually pushed up those stairs when she was pregnant. She you know, just swore that she felt hands on her back from behind her that just pushed her forward. And uh, she did go into premature labor and deliver their daughter prematurely. Her daughter was fine after, you know, a little while, but just a little bit of a preemie, but... Okay. So this is where um, Carl lived for many years. So as you can see, it's not in livable condition. Um, when Carl moved, I think it was probably like the mid nineties. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe there was a fire that had destroyed uh, parts of the, the okay. ceiling, which is what you see here, yeah. the damage. Yeah. And no one has lived here since. So they just kind of left, you know, the apartment, how it, how it was. So. Does it? Just really odd. This little blanket on this mirror, I have no idea why it's there. Okay, so our camera wasn't working, so it got hot. All right, so we were talking about the blanket that's over here on the yeah, mirror. Yeah, so this, um, I'm sure one of our groups must have put this up here, but it's kind of odd because it's never, it's never been there before. So I'm not sure if it's purpose, but a lot of people think that, uh, you know, mirrors maybe are some sort of a, um, a portal. Maybe that's why they've done that. But um, I do know in this area, a lot of people have some negative things happen to them. There's been some really weird activity. Um, sh well, not just the shadows, but we actually had a, a guest say they saw a purplish, like hazy figure. It was hmm. like a purple um, in this particular area. Now, this is the old bathroom. And during the casino days, when this was a brothel, there was also an, an entire second story to this building. Obviously, it doesn't look like much now, but back then, pretty luxurious. Um, there was a hotel that extended farther out into the parking lot. This door was the door that led to um, the hotel from the brothel. So they would bring the ladies in here for the VIP uh, guests. And when you look inside the bathroom here, you'll see some uh, hanging uh, hooks with numbers. And that's the, where they would hang the keys for the, uh, the keys for the hotel. So the ladies would entertain the, the gentlemen up here for uh, VIP and grab the keys. As far as any paranormal, again, any other paranormal activity, like I said, this, is, can, this can be a really good area. And we've also had others who've had quite a bit of experiences here um, over in this particular area. Now, I will tell you right now, you can probably see the shade, the red shade. It will move a bit during, uh, if it's a little windy. So if you hear it or see it moving, that's what that is. Um, but again, that area does get really odd. And that is the area that uh, Father Mike and I were sitting doing an EVP session, when we did get an EVP, what sound is just like Carl saying, yes, I'm still here. Oh. And he recorded that on his iPhone. He has respectfully uh, denied access to it. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and, and he's done that just out of respect for Carl. Yeah. Um, he did not want to exploit him or his situation, which again, I think is pretty respectful considering, you know, what a lot of people are here to do. Um, but as far as any personal experiences other than that for myself, I really don't get a whole lot up here. Um, maybe just because I know Carl's story and, and what his life was like. Um, he did pass away in January, uh, 10 years ago, January this year. Um, and this is where a lot of negative things happened to him. Um, he you know, would tell stories of someone or something coming in through the door and tormenting him, you know, just biting him, scratching him, just doing these things to, and sleep making, basically making him sleep deprived. And it just kind of wore him down to where he was so susceptible to it attaching to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you know, after that, those events kind of led to, you know, the exorcism that was performed on him downstairs. 
Um, so, but as far as any personal, I, again, sometimes it just feels really very melancholy to me up here. Um, but others have, you know, have a lot of, a uh, lot of pretty crazy experiences up here. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, this mess that you see here, um, that we have not picked up was actually in one of these drawers. Um, it's probably been about six months or so ago. And Jen, who is one of our tour guides here, um, she said while she was up here with her group, one of these drawers actually came sliding out of the, um, the dresser and all of this stuff kind of spilled out. So for the longest time, the drawer was left lying on the floor because they were afraid to kind of touch yeah. it and pick it up. But in all the years that we've been doing the tours for Bobby, we've never had anything like that happen over here. So that was pretty significant. And apparently, you know, they were no, there was no one close to it. So, and when Bobby's wife, Janet, was uh, living, you know, of course, her stories that she had, uh, she was very frightened of this place. Um, you know, some people say that she never stepped foot back into the bar. Uh, unfortunately, that's not true. She was the manager of the club, so she had to. But she was not very fond of being here alone. Yeah. So she would always have someone with her. But one of her other stories, this is a little kitchenette uh, area back in, uh, over in this area. And there's a, kit, a sink that is over there. You're welcome to, to come over here if you'd like. Oh, there is. Sneeze through here. Um, but this sink area is where she was, you know, doing some cleaning and things like that. And she claims that something had actually grabbed her arms and was trying to pull her down into the sink, into the water. Um, that was one of the times that really, you know, where she became frightened and she uh, confided with Bobby and, and like we talked about earlier, Bobby's, you know, really doesn't believe a lot of this. So her and Carl became very good friends and confidants and was able to, you know, tell each other their experiences and, and what was going on. So there was quite a few activity that uh, would happen in that area with Bobby's wife. So, yeah. Hmm. We'll turn a light on here for us. You live in a barn. I live in a barn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll be okay. We walked significantly slower than she did. <laughs> That's a long shot, though. My camera's not going to reach all the way that way. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Oh, look. So, um, these little areas here, these are dressing rooms. No, no it was it was it. over here. We all like it. in this back corner. I thought maybe it was an animal at first. I thought it was like a mouse or something. Yeah, like maybe a raccoon or something because it was a lot of shuffling. Yeah, possibly. Maybe a little a mouse or something. Anyway. <laughs> so, yes, the um, showgirls during the casino days. Now, Again, you've got to keep in mind uh, before all the fires happened. <laughs> Again, this was a really big building and it was, it was really nice. Um, so there was a fire that destroyed, again, much of the second story. But right here, you can kind of see it. It looks like a framed in doorway right here. Mm -hmm. There were actual stairs um, that came through that doorway where the showgirls would actually get dressed down here in these. Um, uh, in these dressing rooms and then they would go up to uh, perform. We are actually uh, right underneath the dance floor and the stage. So this is the area where we will hear quite often uh, footsteps above us and you know chair shuffling, sounds like chairs are moving around and things like that. Um, and there's times that we will see some really strange lights down here. It's very odd and they're in different shapes and they go in different directions. So it's not like it's um, maybe reflections from you know car headlights or things like that at night. It's just very, very strange. 
Now, the dressing room right here, and again, you guys are more than welcome to go in there tonight. This one here, this is the one where we've had a lot of uh, male voices in here and uh, reports of people, and I've actually felt this myself, where uh, you feel like your legs are being grabbed. Did you hear that down there? That was like a knocking noise down that I way. I slightly heard it, but yeah, I'm like, I'm, I, I don't it might know. be an animal. Well, and you know what the weird thing is? You thought you heard something yeah. over in the corner when right. we when we were up by the stage, and she said that this is the bottom of the stage, right. and we heard it when we walked over here. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That is Very the weird. bitter biggest mother effing spider I've ever seen in my entire life. Which that one? No, I've seen That's a bigger a big one. Spider. I, said, I saw one of those in my house the other day. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to sleep there. <laughs> you live in a barn. You live in a yeah. <laughs> And I feel a lot of spiders. I'm not saying that's the biggest one I've seen. Oh my goodness! But but yeah, I I myself have actually felt like there were hands grabbing like my ankles here. and trying to pull on my legs in in here. Yeah. Hmm. We'll do um, it. This one here. No, we won't kill the spider. We'll find. Again, it, it, it's pretty much the same. I think throughout the building, shadows are pretty much everywhere. Right? That's a given. And so we get the shadows quite a bit in here, and we've had some EVPs. I thought I heard a man talking, I but I, I thought maybe something. it was somebody yelling because it was on a motorcycle, so maybe they had their radio playing. Could have been. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Makes sense. Which just sounded like a, a motorcycle just passed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this dressing room here, um, this dressing room is what a lot of people uh, think maybe could have been... Um, Johanna's uh, dress room. Johanna was one of the showgirls. That's more of an urban legend. Um, we've not been really able to uh, prove her story uh, per se. So the urban legend with her is that she was a showgirl and became involved with a young man by the name of Robert Randall and became pregnant. Uh, and this was during the 40s, I believe is when this happened. And her father, who supposedly was the manager of the club, um, found out about this pregnancy and this relationship, of course, was not very happy because his little girl was pregnant and not married. So he hired his group of guys to kill this kid. And they supposedly that's what they did. They murdered him. When she found out that her father had done this, she actually tried to poison him or kill him with poison arsenic. He survived, became very ill, but she supposedly tried to commit suicide herself and with arsenic. And the stories are that uh, when Bobby bought the building, they found um, a journal up uh, in the room above the stage and uh, found writing on a uh, wall panel um, that related to uh, Johanna's story. We've never been able to prove that. Um, again, it's it's just a, a story that's kind of been passed down through the years. Now, I will say that we found a, uh, not a birth certificate, but a death certificate for a young lady by the name of Johanna. Don't quite remember her last name, but this death certificate totally, the timeline is way off 1914. And it does insinuate that she died suicide by poisoning but it also states that she was married to uh, uh, the occupation of her husband was a firefighter. Hmm. So again, we, we don't know for sure if Johanna's story is 100% real. We've never been able to find any newspaper articles or anything like that to, to back that up. So again, it could be somewhere it was a true story along the way and maybe details got you know mixed up, dates were mixed up or something like that. But um, but anyway, a lot of people think that this may have been her dressing room only because we do hear something very similar up here like we do up at the stage. We hear what sounds like a young woman a woman uh, humming or singing. And there's times that we've heard or smelled uh, like a flowery floral type perfume uh, from in here. And again, people will bring roses and things like that, flowers. Um, for Johanna, just uh, to pay respect. Um, if her story is is true, uh, it's pretty pretty tragic uh, in a sense. So please disregard the 
mess. Now, if you hear water dripping, of course, this is where it's coming from. So they're trying to do some plumbing work here. All right. oh. It felt like something just hit me in the head. Just like a light, like I walked into like a spider web hanging or something that had like something, like a ball on it. I don't know. It was weird. A spider web that had a ball on it? Yeah, just like a clump of like leaves or something. I don't know. It's interesting. Well, that's actually <laughs> one of the claims and, and really entire, the, the entire part of the building is um, it does feel like you're walking into a spider web, like it, but it, there's nothing there. Like, I mean, it's a pretty old basement but I feel it a lot upstairs. Like I'm walking into a spider web, but yet, you know, there's, yeah. there's nothing there. So. The staircase to nowhere. All right, so yes, and you're more than welcome to climb over here if you guys can with equipment, and if you wanted to, you're, you're welcome to do that. This is actually the well, um, but this is what a lot of people refer to as the Hell's Gate or Portal to Hell. Um, the story with this is uh, Pearl Bryan was a young lady who was decapitated. She, her story is a 100% true crime story. Um, it's actually very, it's, it's tragic in itself. And if you're interested in true crime kind of stories, it's, it's worth delving into and, and going through the facts. But long story short, um, she was visiting from Indiana became involved with a uh, young man who was a dental student at the University of Cincinnati, uh, just up the road here across the river. And again, very similar to Johanna's story, became pregnant. And uh, she was trying to convince the young man to marry her, but he was trying to convince her to, um, to get an abortion. And now this is 1896, which was a huge no-no, right? Abortion was illegal. And of course, you know, young ladies who were pregnant out of wedlock were shunned. And a lot of times they were sent off to these homes to have their children. And so neither would give in. <laughs> Did you hear something else? Yeah, yeah, it was like a knock up that way. Like that way? Yeah. I okay. thought it looked kind of like a like, footstep. Was that your, oh. I was no, like, I'm, I'm replicating. That? I thought it sounded like a footstep. Oh. Very good. interesting. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so anyway, <laughs> she, there's a story with that. So um, neither one of them would give in. So he came up with this idea along with his roommate, also a dental student. They were going to take her to dinner downtown Cincinnati, which they did, and they drugged her food. When she became unconscious, they loaded her onto a horse-drawn carriage and they uh, drove her two miles south of this building to a farm, an old farm. And again, back at that time, it was very rural. And they, she was still alive, drug her body out to the middle of the field and uh, started to perform this abortion, this procedure. And of course, something happened and she died. And they panicked. Back then, the only way they, for them to identify a dead body would be you know, by your face. There was no DNA, fingerprinting, anything like that. So they, they just freaked, you know, didn't know what to do. So they decapitated her and they put her head into a brown leather bag and um, gave the brown leather bag to the stagecoach driver and told him to dispose of the head. They left the body lying in the middle of the field. A couple of days later, a little boy found her body, her headless body lying in the field and um, the investigation started from there. That's probably water leaking yeah. behind us. Um, so eventually they were able to identify her by her shoes. A lot of things, she had her shoes uh, personally custom made. Uh, she was wealthy at that time and uh, that's how they were able to trace back to who it belonged to. And so the two gentlemen who murdered her were uh, publicly, uh, they were tried and convicted and um, they were publicly hung, uh, hanged um, in the square here uh, in Newport, just a couple of blocks up the road on March 21st, 1897. And they went back and forth of, you know, who did it, who didn't do it, we did do it, we didn't do it. But, you know, eventually again, they, you know, they did go ahead and hang them for that. But, um, and that was the last public hanging for Campbell County. So um, her head, was again supposedly disposed of here in the well, but her head was never found. This well system, the tunnel system, of course flows underneath the building, underneath the railroad tracks out here. 
and immediately dumps out of the embankment into the Licking River. So in fact, you know, if that is what happened, the river would have washed her head away, which is probably why it was never found. So that's uh, Miss Pearl's story. Pretty tragic, pretty sad. Well, I think the crazy part about that too is I think I remember hearing that it was part of a satanic ritual. There were and that's what that. they and that's what they did and they they dumped her body here but isn't that crazy how like the story the gets story. spin so much yeah yeah, yeah. It, and a lot of people did think that she was actually murdered here and it was part of satanic now there is the story and and of course this can't be proven but there was the story that the young men had access to the slaughterhouse which they thought was here and the well because they also supposedly, you know, um, delved into a lot of the occult, uh, you know, did a lot of satanic rituals and things like that. Now that was never proven, um, but that is one of the reasons why it was suspected they had access here. Because there were rumors that there was a lot of satanic activity, occult activity going on here in this building. Um, and by the way, a lot of people thought that this was the slaughterhouse. But according to some of the research that Laura and uh, some of our other team members have done, maybe the slaughterhouse wasn't here. This was actually a home at one point, um, way back in the early 1900s, uh, where a, you know a man lived here and his family. So we don't know for sure, 100% yeah. for sure, that this was exactly. I, the I definitely heard somewhere that it was a slaughterhouse. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. There was. That's part of the, the stories. Now there was a slaughterhouse located but we don't think it was here we do think that it was actually located on this far end of the property um, now there's actually three wells on this property this being one two others that are actually located on this far end of the property so again we're not real sure 100 hmm. percent sure but uh pearl story is 100 percent yeah true so you were thinking that you were hearing some shuffling. Yeah, I heard, I heard yeah. like a foot, like somebody was like walking. I just like you slip up a step. Like it kind of sounded like that. So that it's kind of interesting that we actually call this little area just our little our team. Uh, we kind of nicknamed this area uh, the Shuffler because we do often hear what sounds like shuffling feet through here. Now we when we were up in the men's restroom earlier, we were talking about the uh, this um, trap door. So, oh, I get it. This is actually where the trap door was located. So this is the hallway back to the men's restroom. And then this is where the trap door would have been located. Hmm. So um, the story with uh, the trap door is during prohibition, of course, alcohol was illegal. So when the casino was being raided, they would have men working down here and then they would roll down their kegs of, of alcohol and they would either dump it down in the well or they would roll the barrels over the, uh, the embankment and into the river. But not only did they do that, supposedly with there being a casino and with it being the mob, you know, they kind of like to make a little bit of money on the side. And so they would be, I guess, essentially what you would call loan sharks. They would loan out money and of course you got to pay them back with interest. And you know, they gave you a certain amount of time you had to pay up, right? So anyone who was caught cheating or stealing or owed a debt to the club were brought down here to the men who worked down here to be dealt with. When they were brought down here, they were then actually put into this little room here. This actually used to be a cell and there, there's not a light in here, I'm sorry. That's okay. But you can still see some of the old hinges. So there were metal bars here and they would hold these people here until the end of the night when the club closed and they dealt with them that way. So we were kind of told through the years by uh, some of the old timers, the older folks who used to you know, come to this establishment when the casino was open that there were undocumented tortures and murders in this room. And this is where we get a lot of um, activity as far as physical things happening to people. Hmm. Um, bite marks, scratches, you know, you name it. And, and honestly, in all of the years that we've been doing this, I've probably <laughs> been in here maybe five times. I'm not claustrophobic. It is a very small uh, cell, um, but it just doesn't feel right to yeah. me. It just doesn't feel right. 
So a lot of people, you know, they, they say they um, feel like a breath on the back of their neck. Mm -hmm. They will hear the words get out um, and they can feel I'm like just someone's for the big spiders. standing behind them. Um, so yeah, I just get chills even thinking about it. I'm yeah. getting a little goosebumps. So this one here though, um, even when the lights are out, it gets very, very dark. You can still see shadow activity, especially at night. And there's been many times that I felt like something has approached me and, and almost kind of enveloped me and, but very quickly just disappears. Um, you can't see it or anything like that. It's just kind of like you, you feel this heaviness on you and then it's gone. Um, I have had things thrown at me in here, not violently, just kind of like thrown my way, kind of like getting my attention mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, but never have I ever had anything specifically happen to me directed toward the well. Well, so if you just kind of look, um, you can just see random images over, all over the walls. You know, I think that one, this one here that you're kind of pointed towards, I think this is one that a lot of people notice right away. You know, and there's some kind of evil looking eyes underneath and we call him George Bush, if you can see him. <laughs> But uh, there's kind of one here, but just very random faces and images and things all over the walls. Um, but I, I have to say, um, and as you can tell, th these walls do get very damp. So I, honestly, I think this is really nothing more than um, water erosion, water staining. Yeah. Um, and then it's, you know, just the pareidolia, if mm -hmm. you've ever heard of that term. Matrixing, making shapes out of clouds kind of thing. Um, even with that being said, though, this room takes on a whole new vibe as well. Um, during the Pearl Bryan murder, now you have to remember back then, before the mob purchased this uh, property, the wall back here uh, was dirt and the floor was dirt. And um, supposedly, again, we've never been able to prove this, during the Pearl Bryan investigation, uh, stories were that when the police came here, uh, they found a pentagram drawn on the dirt floor in this room. And again, going back to the satanic activity, there were rumors of children that were missing in the community that the um, townspeople thought that these children were used in uh, human sacrifice and were never found. So with that, you'll see um, some toys. A lot of them have disappeared, but um, we used to have tons of toys in here. Uh, but they're kind of used as trigger objects because we do get a lot of uh, EVPs of what sounds like kids back here. And it's so bizarre. And if you've ever heard, or if you've never heard, a, an EVP what sounds like a child crying, it's, it's so disturbing. But yet you can't trust that. Yeah. Because again, there's so many theories, you know, that if there's something that's evil or whatever, demonic, or negative it's going to try to gain your trust by acting like a child because you know no, no one's afraid of a kid right so uh, we don't know we don't know for, <laughs> i know right <laughs> we don't know for sure but we get a lot of activity the evps that we get back here um we will sometimes hear uh, footsteps above us in here um you'll definitely hear while you're in here footsteps shuffling around out in there and then when we were upstairs in the bull room earlier, we were talking about the um, the gargoyle creature-like thing. I've seen something almost similar to that down here in this room. It actually, it was but more cat-like. You could kind of see the hunch of its back and the hunch of its head. And you couldn't see the feet, but you could see some legs coming down. And it crawled through this doorway and it crawled through here and then it kind of just disappeared into the wall. Hmm. And a lot of the claims, both here in the basement and upstairs, is that people will say they feel like a cat is rubbing up against their legs like a, a cat would. Hmm. So um, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so any questions? Any? I don't think so. Do you have any questions? Nobody no. else. Okay, no, I didn't want to like interrupt her talking, but no, I know okay. like you want me to interrupt her talking when I hear stuff. None of you heard men talking. I did, but I thought maybe. Thank you. I thought maybe it was I the water, heard, like a guy but it only happened whenever there. you were talking. 
Yeah, so I was like, oh, it's probably nothing. Yeah. So I like took this, and I don't know if you know, so I was kind of like holding it out coming here. This area? Yeah, yeah like, from like from over there, here. I thought I heard like a man. But talking. now, and every time you would stop, I would listen, but then I wouldn't hear it. Yeah, and it was like almost like a tiny mumble, and it sounded like somebody was like almost outside, like talking. So I'm like, I didn't know. I, I kind of wanted to be like, nobody's outside, right? Yeah, and then I, I just, I thought it was the water, but then I would hear the water, and I'm like, that's not that's it. Not the water. I hear like. Talking. Yeah, it was like talking, like they were. Almost like two people were conversing, but not. Yeah, because like you'd hear it and then it'd stop and then you'd hear it again. Sorry, Sorry. it was blinding me. <laughs> um, well, really, how do you? If you look, in this, I know <laughs> this little room right here, and, and not to kind of interrupt, but this no. room right here, just as we're walking through, I've had a few things happen to me in here too. Um, I have heard some uh, really weird noises coming from here. I've actually had my wrist grabbed in here before, and if you look on the walls here, on this door. You see some bullet holes oh, here. Yeah. And then also on this wall, there are some bullet holes here. So obviously something happened um, yeah. in in this room or very close. So and a lot of these fixtures, like these old kitchen counters and sinks that you see, these are from the kitchen and the old kitchen from up the upstairs in the dinner club. So oh. um a lot of old antiques in here that still, you know, were related to that dinner club. So there's uh a lot of that so but yeah no I'm, I'm sorry I didn't hear the the voices no it's okay it's, it's, okay. it's very interesting because sometimes I'm like I wonder if it's in my head that's why I'm like I don't say anything because it's probably just in your head yeah yeah that's funny, yeah, because I definitely heard it too, and I was like, uh. I heard it like two or three times. Yeah, I did, and then I, I would let her talk, and then she would stop for a second, and then and I'd hear like, it again, gotcha. and I was like, maybe I'm not going crazy, because I heard it more than once. Setting up, well, for one, we're setting up that REM pod, and that REM pod is going Won't off. Stop going off, and then clear as day, kids. We voices, hear a kid. Because there was actually kids. Yeah, and we're like, what the I hell? Sprint. <laughs> I was like, I, was like, I need to know We need to know if there's now. kids outside. This is still going it's off. Still Look going. at this, guys. I wonder if there's something wrong. I don't think so. Cause when I'm moving it. Hang on, just keep. Oh. Look, it stopped. Do you think you get the light? I don't think so. Lights don't normally do that. Here's what you do. Hold on. Walk away from it for a second. This is what we're gonna do. If you are doing that, oh, that was me. Can you turn it off? Can you like walk away from it? Can you walk towards it? Oh, I don't like me. Can you put your hand on it for me, please? to be something wrong with that and to be clear I just bought a new battery for that today but it should be fine like can you leave it alone a little further Okay, well. It's so weird. I'm gonna move it over to the other table. Yeah, see if it does the same thing. I don't I think this it. light. It's okay, it might. <laughs> My bad if I'm poking you. Yeah, try to reset that. There we go. Maybe that's what it was. There we go. Okay. So let's turn around. Maybe off. we just had a mishap. But that was weird that it we was, asked it to stop and, and it, it stopped. stopped. Yeah. And then we asked it to go ahead and then And we have the lights on because we're we're still setting up for Why is it? It was just fine. It should be doing the exact opposite. I think so, yeah. Are you messing with us? That's not cool. That's not cool. 
Yeah, see how it's what fine the? now? It's just that table. That's really fucking weird. And that's the same table that she was talking about where I that feel lady. Like we should show her like in real life. Like be like, come on, come see this, yo. Come see this, yo. Does this happen? Wait, try it one more time. Because I, I need. I want to try it in like the dark. I need corner. third times the charm to be, to confirm that. Okay. Now and it's. You do like this corner, right? Was that the corner that she said it was? Yes. It's just this table. Is it? There doesn't look like there's anything over here that would have. Do you like this table? If you like the table, can you walk closer to the REM pod, please? It's an antenna. The antenna? Touch the antenna. Okay. Please? Oh, I think I just had a flash of light. Oh, wait. Again? I... Okay. Yeah, reflecting oh. off of this somehow. Is there something right there? Is that why it's only... That's so far away, there's no way that's going to do it. This might be, like, malfunctioning like crazy. But it only does it here. There's only... I'm going to go get the other one, and I'm going to try the other one. Let's go get the music box and try it with the music box. It would be malfunctioning. But why is it just, because I put it on that edge and it stopped. I put it on this edge and it didn't stop. Okay, so I'm going to set this right here. If you are messing with this device right here, can you come over and put yourself in front of this device? Let me just verify that it's should be working, yeah. All you have to do is put yourself in front of it. Okay. Maybe the REM pod has to go somewhere else. I don't know. But that was really weird. We'll put it in a in a different shot. I'll put the this one, I'll leave the music box. the music box so do ya sorry I don't think there's much that I can do about that we're gonna take the REM pod oh here is a white ball if you also want to move the cue ball you can it's encouraged yeah it is it's in the shot what was that that sounded like boxes moving girl yeah we haven't even gotten started yet like this is our first setup that's all we've done that was like boxes falling over somewhere in this area. That's so cool though. As you can see, like, I, love I'm, I haven't even switched over to my other camera yet. Like we're still on the iPhone. Oh, that's a fan making noise. Well, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? But that wasn't the No, no, no. That was definitely a box or something moving. Let's get a camera on that. Uh, let's get another camera set up. And we'll put the REM pod over there, see if it does the same thing. If it does the same thing, then maybe I broke it. It's, which sucks, because I, I just got that. It's broke. I don't think it's broke, because we moved it around. It's... It did, yeah. All right, so let's get this camera set up. So I'm going to turn this off. Right on 200. 
red. That's why I normally have it on. It's radio, for sure. Yeah. Why do other people do this when they don't get things coming through? Because they're in an area that might not be so populated, or they're down, like, in the basement, we might not get anything coming through. Because we might not get, like, the reception or whatever. Yeah, when we were in Cleveland, I had to stop doing Spirit Box because there was way too much interference. That was like Spanish. Didn't she say it used to be like a Latin thing? At one point? It was weird. Yeah, because most of it sounded like radio to me. It sounds like just oh. pure radio. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody? What is it? I thought there was a bug on my back. I scared the shit out of me. It legit was like. I thought there was a bug. <laughs> You came out of that chair so fast. <gasps> well, I don't know if something just like touched me or if there was a bug. I there was a bug, yeah. I didn't see any bug. I don't see no bug on you now. Maybe they're mad about me being up. I'm just sitting here on Instagram. <laughs> they're like, like pay attention to me. Girl. Well, I have a couple different methods that we could do besides fear box. Just say my hand. Oh my god. I feel it. Like, I feel like a line. It, there's lines, but I can't tell if it's from your bra? Like, tan lines? No. I just put this on today and I've had... I don't have my oh my god my phone. I'm like seeing lines, but they're like I can't I can tell feel if they're them. Lines? I no, I can feel them like they're raised. Run your hand on it. Oh, that's really weird. You can. And I didn't scratch it because I just like yeah, you did. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Yay! Excitement. Yeah, because you can I just say my hand. I, it said, I swear it said my hand earlier. I don't even really feel them anymore. Yeah, they're just like super light. I have been blessed. Thank you. <laughs> I am the chosen one. The chosen one. You scared the shit out of me though. I bet, yeah. <laughs> I'm not really hearing anything but interference. I thought I heard my hand at one point. No, I don't like it. Yeah, I hate spirit box and try to move on to something different. I was gonna get a portal device before we came here, but I kind of I'm like a very last minute person and I accidentally kept putting it off and putting it off and then uh yeah no I don't have one because I, I remembered like a couple days ago and I, I never would have been able to order it in time and then yeah. get here. Is there anybody here that wants to talk to us? If you want to come talk to us, you have to come do so in this device over here.
can you tell us the name of the man who is leaning against the pool table? Did you, um, did you ever go to Scranton when you lived in Pennsylvania? No. It's on the other side of Pennsylvania. Uh, that's weird. Take that step again. Take that step. That was it. I knew that you definitely weren't close enough. I wonder if it was like my shadow. Your shadow? Yeah. Can you walk away from it, please? Can you come back and light it up? Pull, pull the phone away from it a little bit. Maybe that's... No. Notice how none of the other colors are lighting up too. It's just that solid color. device over here, we'll be able to hear you. That's a car. Just want to mark that. Okay. Yeah, I thought that as well. That when I looked at it, it like did that. There's a lot of flies in here, too. Or maybe a fly. No, there's no fly by it. I don't think, I don't even know if a fly could set that off, could it? It probably could. Can I move it? Yeah, go ahead. You can move it wherever you want to put it. I legit just want to, like... Because it wasn't my shadow. Can you set that off again for us, just like you were? No, it can't. I don't know. That's weird. Nicole is getting in the well. I'm not getting in it. Oh, well, duh. But... Is there anybody here that wants to talk to us? Just to show that you're actually here. That's okay. We think we heard some men talking earlier. Do they want to come back? I don't want to come back. <laughs> you're not helping. <laughs> Maybe that's why they don't want to talk to us. Because I know I'm a feminist. Because <laughs> I know you're a feminist. And of course, they're really old, so of course, if yeah, they, they, they would have that mindset, yeah. You feel like the men made the decisions for you. There's got to be something wrong with it. I don't know. I've never seen it go off anywhere else like that. I was just little. My finger's in the way down. I know. I do have the EVP recorder going, so. 
Yeah, you can slide it down that way. Hello. Do you want to tell us your name? Do you know what year it is for you? Is it really hot where you're at? 